This is the Trout Bitten Podcast. Trout Bitten. Trout Bitten? Trout Bitten. Trout Bitten. Trout Bitten? Yeah. Trout Bitten. Trout Bitten. It's about trout. Wild trout. This is Trout Bitten. This is the Trout Bitten Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Dominic Swintoski. I'm the owner of Trout Bitten and the author of TroutBitten.com. All right, welcome back, everyone. To my full crew of podcast friends here with me tonight and to everyone out there listening, welcome back. And thanks for joining me. This is the start of Season 9 on the Trout Bitten Podcast. And tonight, we're here to discuss what has changed in the fly fishing world. How have the tactics changed? How has the gear changed? How has the flow of information changed? And how has all of that changed the way we fish for trout? So everyone gets into fly fishing in their own time. You kind of enter into the scene and if you could take a snapshot of how things are, like what is popular, what are the trends, and basically how anglers are fishing and what they're talking about, that snapshot and what point in time you start this whole endeavor very much shapes your experience moving forward. Because a lot of your understanding about what is common or accepted or even frowned upon is shaped right away as you start researching and learning about this fishing thing that eventually becomes a big part of your life. So I meet many anglers these days who just fish streamers, or maybe they nymph a lot but never really learn to fish dry flies. And that's a good example because almost no one did that 30 years ago. Most fly anglers then, far and away most fly anglers, were dry fly fishermen first. And maybe they'd fish the other stuff when the dry flies just wouldn't take fish. But of course, there were always some streamers only fishermen too, and lots of nymph anglers. And that's how things change. I think it's anglers operating on the edges of what's, let's say, normal that help bring things along. So things change quickly. Everything does. And I like to think that the fly fishing world has changed for the better, mostly. Because I think more information about more tactics and even better gear leads to a more versatile angler on the water. And versatile anglers tend to be lifetime anglers because there's always something new to work on. All right, we'll see if my friends agree with me and we'll hear from them about how fly fishing has changed in just a minute. But first, let me introduce these guys. These are my best fishing friends and it's been fantastic to have these guys around through the years to share ideas with to hear their perspectives, and to learn from them. Uh, That all happened long before this podcast started. And in truth, I think that's exactly why this podcast works so well. Because these conversations you hear on this podcast through the years now are are pretty much what we've always had, just sitting around the campfire or on the riverbank, or sometimes in texts. Uh, So it's season nine now. We've published the Trout Pitten podcast for two years. And I think it's fair then, to kind of reintroduce ourselves here at the beginning of this new season. So let's do it, guys. We'll each of you share just a bit about yourselves. Hey, here's Matt Grobe, one of the OG Trout Pitten crew, the legacy, legacy Trout Pitten crew, right, Matt? That's right, baby. <laughs> OG. OG. Bringing it back. We had a forum where we separated things when we brought new people on. We were like, we can't, we can't let them see all the secrets. So I uh, was like, I'm going to separate stuff to legacy trout pitting and it's just whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we had to, we, it took a while for us to trust you. That's what it <laughs> came down to. Right. <laughs> I mean, we, we would, we would handpick people to That's come right. in on the forum to elaborate right. on yep. tactics and, and kind of what we're doing here on a, in a podcast way. Right. But, uh, yeah. but we had some, I think we were a little uh, rough around the edges back then. What do you say, Dom? Huh? The yeah. OG crew is a little, a little <laughs> tight around, a little tight than who we let into the circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Bill and I were talking about this the other day. That I was much more secretive back then, and like I'm still. You guys know this. Real secretive about spots and locations, mm-hmm. and no spot burning and all that. Do things different. But man, you know though, I've always loved sharing ideas. Sure. And yeah, it's, it, that's what Tropin's built on. And I was always the one that was like, let's talk about this. Let's, let's really, <laughs> you know, put some flesh on the bones of exactly how we were fishing. I love that stuff. Hey, yeah. Matt, will you, will you tell us just a little bit about what you do out there in Montana? Uh, yeah, man. I am uh, 
director of activities at a private guest ranch uh yeah. and uh do do some guiding I, I i still guide at the ranch and and uh you know mostly just for the ranch but that's kind of what consumes most of my time in between uh raising two two little girls in uh bozeman right montana and uh yeah i get out and fish every chance i can i was out today actually which is, i love it which is fun yeah so uh yeah it's a little bit about myself and like you said was uh fortunate to to see this thing at the beginning and see what you've yeah. turned it into right uh, as of today and it's 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 a pretty special thing to watch well not just me that's for sure it's everybody here and everybody there's there's more people oh so matt we all want to know are you ever coming back to pa ever back to pennsylvania mm. I know. I mean, the door's open, right? I'm kind of, I have a good thing going right now. Uh, I know you do. You just need the better business offer. <laughs> it was a two year Possibly. plan. It was a two year yeah, plan. It was a two year plan. Now it's mm -hmm. 10. Um, but I, I, I kind of don't operate that way. Right. I know. I kind of just live and never know what will happen, you know? Yeah. So, good stuff out um, there, dude. If the Happy Steelers start you. winning, I'll come, I'll come back, Dom. <laughs> Let's not. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> all right. They're all right. They just got better this week. Listen, on the don't forget Thursday night Patriots game. I'm I'm back. We're tailgating. Oh, hey, the Patriots are losing. Like those oh, are the worst Bill Belichick in, losses yeah. ever. They're one and four. Awesome. Doesn't that make you smile inside? I actually feel really confident we're going to beat them. <laughs> you know, you know, well, because in the last two games they got outscored by like seventy points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, combined. That's great. Oh, I That's love great. it. Let them suffer. Right. Hey, uh, here's <laughs> I hate the. <laughs> oh, if you're a New Englander, just go to hell. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stop watching or stop Cheaters. listening. Cheaters. Anyway, hey, here's Josh Darling. He owns Wild Media, and he has a lot of kids, right? Uh, he, as Wild Media, he's the one who produces the Trout and videos uh, for YouTube, and uh, it's been a great thing. He's done a lot of graphic design for work for Trout Bitten as well, and he contributes a lot of well. Probably the best photos. I, th I don't think anybody's going to argue that. Nope. Josh has the best photos that are on the Trout Pit site. <laughs> on the Trout Pit site right now. What's up, Josh? Mute. Losers on mute. Not even an adult. Nope. <laughs> Not even. <laughs> it an seems like adult something sized. an adult would be able to. <laughs> adult size would be able I'm sorry, to I've control. Got... Yeah. Speaking of lots of children, mm. two out of our four are sick right now, and they're all they're all young too, and so they're all four and under. So when they get sick, it's they all get sick, and then it's all it's all downhill from there. So two of the four <laughs> are sick right now. Our six month old is sick, and she's wailing in the background. So I keep myself on mute, like an adult sized person. <laughs> you could have taken tonight off <laughs> because you got sick kids, and you could have said, "Guys, I can't make it to the podcast." But we think the reason you're here is because you you just want to drink a beer and get away from the sick kids for an hour. <laughs> it's it's not a bad deal. <laughs> just let my wife take it and she understands we're good but i was gonna say i like your guys's photos i would i would i would argue that mine are not the best sometimes sometimes you hear him slide that in there sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> it's not mine well mine i mean are there not. are times when they are but not always you know yeah listen to you very diplomatic very nice anything else you want to tell well, us about you. yourself josh i mean not not really i'm that's fine trying to trying to raise a large family work two jobs and and try to find time for fishing and hunting and hanging out with you guys inside. It's the craziest time you'll ever have in life. I only had two young ones. Two, you know, they're two years apart. And uh, yeah. mm, man, that was a crazy time. And now they're uh, thirteen and fifteen. It's not easier, but it's different. It's easier. Sure. Yeah. It is. It's easier. Um, it's hard in its, in its own way as they get older. And I'm sure you know. I'll be saying the same thing when they're um, 22 and 24, but whatever. You're in the toughest time, I'd say. Under four. Yes, we'll see. <laughs> You'll see. Yes, All we'll right, see. He, here's Bill Dell, another uh, Western PA native. He guides for trout pitting, and he shares a lot of photos for the website. Uh, fishes a ton, wears out gear, hates doing everything the way you're supposed to do it. That's uh, my description of, of Delhi. <laughs> I'm not doing it that way. You mean the more efficient way. Oh, that's good. What else, Del? Tell us about yourself. Oh, man. So I guess, you know, my, my day job is and I'm an IT architect, so that's why I like to play with spreadsheets. 
and computer stuff. And so my, my, my getaway from the office is to run and hide in the woods. So I don't have to talk, work on computers, talk to humans and just hang out with the fish, right? <laughs> hang out with fish. <laughs> That's worked out pretty well for you, dude. Yeah, talk to so the fish. Talk to I the like fish. It. So is it safe to say between mm. Bill, myself and Dom that Bill has the strongest <laughs> Yinzer accent. M mine goes back and forth, right? People tell me I have a very strange accent. Okay. He's considered. I think Bill has a strong Yinzer <laughs> accent, more so than heavy me. Yinzer. I, I think, think he's that. just heavy <laughs> Yinzer. Take the Yinzer. I'll, take. I'll take the Yinzer title belt. Yeah. When I listen back, you know, on my way to yeah. work, it's just funny because I'm like, God, Bill, you sound so <laughs> Yinzer. <laughs> People think I sound Yinzer too, but I think really? Bill has me. He's got me beat. Well, most Yinzers are proud of it. You know, I'm proud of it. I'm not ashamed <laughs> of the way we sound. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. it. All right. And then there's Austin Dando. <laughs> okay. From uh, kind of Eastern PA, side right? of the state. Right. Yeah. South, southeastern. Southeastern PA. Austin's now like the trout bitten event coordinator. We were just talking about that tonight. It's things he's looking into. And he uh, guides for trout bitten as well. Obviously contributes a bunch of great photos. And um, what else, bud? Yeah. Tell us about yourself. Um, originally from Southeast PA, went to school, yeah. Penn state, uh, moved away for two and a half years or so made my way back to central PA and, uh, having left, don't plan to leave, but I, I work know. for a, uh, home building company. I'm an operations manager there. So the, the details and the technical things of building kind of, uh, spark that interest in fishing as well as, you know, the building industry does. So mm. brewer of beer. Yeah. Anything that, uh, is detail oriented, I think interests me. Or home improvement you know, requires specialist. requires thought out processes. Yeah, right on. That's why you like nymphing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Definitely. All right, guys, let's uh let's do it. You ready? Here we go. Let's, let's do it. All right. So I said in the intro, life moves fast. And so is the fly fishing industry. And of course, it's always been moving. Everything has. Progress happens without asking us. And things change whether we like them to or not. And I think most of what we'll talk about here are positive things, real progress. And we might as well go that direction because we already have two podcasts, uh, two podcast episodes dedicated to our airing of grievances concerning uh, why we think the fly fishing world sucks. <laughs> so we're going to stay positive. <laughs> nah, really. Uh, let's think about the last 40 years or so. And maybe my perspective is skewed here because that's how long I've been fishing. Um, and a little longer, but I, I think the last 40 years have been a period really of the most dramatic change, not just in the fly fishing world, but for just about everything. Um, we have an age gap here between us of about 20 years in this group. So it'll be interesting to hear how our takes differ and how they're the same. All right, let, let's do it, guys. Let's get started. What, what has changed in the industry in the last 40 years or in the years you've been fishing? Whichever, however you want to approach it. How's the, I don't know, the whole fly fishing scene really changed? What have you seen? What's notable? Should we go like oldest to youngest on this? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, then I have to talk again. No. Right? I'll jump in. I think I'm going to yeah. just start with the most um, impactful thing that I've seen. And I've been fishing, I'm what, 41? I've been fishing since I was 12. So, um, and this is a broad thing, right? the yeah. internet piece, but just how, how we get information and how yeah. I used to get information when I first started off in the sport, I relied heavy on, uh, one-on-one -on -one meetups, really, really learning from other anglers on the water. Yeah. Um, and, and because really that was the only way to mimic, you know, you could get VHSs, I guess. <laughs> and, but, and I have those. Yeah, we had some of those, right? Um, yeah. But I think the most um, probable way to get better and, and learn was to get out on the water with others. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, you know, books and fly shops in general, those, yeah. those three things, fishing with others, books, fly shops, that's kind of the circle that I would go through, um, you know, to absorb as much information as I possibly could at the beginning of my career. Um, and obviously we know where it's at now. I don't have to elaborate on it too much, but cause I'm sure we'll get into it, but that's, you know, click of a button. Now you, you can do it remote. You can do it over the computer. You can mm. learn so much. And I think that's 
you know, positive overall, right? It's a, it's different. It's it's quicker, but access to information is much easier, um, and it's better uh, overall, right? There's a yeah. lot of it out there, you know. So it's just different, different in a good way. It is different. I mean, I, well, trout bitten wouldn't exist if the internet, you know, didn't exist. If it wasn't possible for somebody like me originally, and now all you guys contributing to put information out there. I didn't need a big publishing empire, you know, to, to be able to start trout pitting. Right. And now it's become all of this and it is its own media company. So that, that's cool. I think the internet has changed again, like everything. I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? But every sport, everything you are into, obviously the, just the flow of information, news, whatever, politics, everything, it's there, like you say. For sure. Whether it's after a fishing trip or at a backyard fire, you can bet the Trout Bitten crew has a case of New Trail Broken Heels along with us. It's honestly our favorite beer. This hazy IPA is smooth and full-bodied. Hand-selected citra hops lead to notes of bright clementine and juicy ruby red grapefruit. Broken Heels is a keeper. New Trail Beer is proudly brewed in Williamsport, Pennsylvania and delivered cold to your favorite craft beer retailer every week. At New Trail, it's not about being the best angler. It's about getting out there. So enjoy nature's moments and reward yourself for a day well fished with New Trail Broken Heels. It's Trout Bitten's favorite beer. For over a decade, Smith Creek's high quality fly fishing accessories have helped anglers just like you to keep your gear in easy reach, free up your hands, and keep our waters clean. Their award-winning Rod Clip Plus now has two ways to attach it to your vest or pack making it easier to tie a fly, change a hook, or release your catch. All Smith Creek products are built guide tough, using rugged materials, and backed by their strong commitment to customer service. This fall, Smith Creek is introducing even more new products, so keep checking their website at smithcreek.co for more information and special offers from now through Christmas. The technical aspect is, the other thing is GPS. Like when we used to, I don't know, when I first kind of started driving around and trying to find fishing spots, there wasn't a GPS, whether it be a Garmin yep. and a TomTom Tom or whatever. Like you had to use, you had to know how to use a map. And basically at that point you had to take a buddy because you had one guy that would read the map to you while you tried to drive. And if you right. tried to do one man drive and map, it didn't turn out real well. It That's took right. a little bit longer. And just the ability to just click a button and, and drop a pin and to navigate to that is just huge, I think. And to share that with your buddy. Huge. Yeah. Like you huge. say. Huge. I feel like in the last maybe 10, I'd say 10 years, I've seen fly fishing come more mainstream or mainstream focused. Like, for example, we're talking about media stuff. The other day I was watching an Allstate insurance commercial. Maybe you guys have seen this. <laughs> okay. And it's, it's going, the it's about, okay, there's a podcast oh. for this. There's a podcast uh, yeah. for that. Yeah. And then it goes, there's even a podcast about fly fishing right. called, why is that person doing that? <laughs> <laughs> and I had to do a double take. Did they really yeah. <laughs> say there's even a podcast? I saw that. Pod? And, yeah. uh, you know, how bizarre is that? But I look back on the last 10 years and think how much marketing and how much, um, uh, advertisement and uh, publicity fly fishing has gotten that may be viewed as like something more modern or cool than yeah. it used to be. Yeah, yeah. And and I also have to wonder in the same vein, will we eventually as maybe a marketing tactic wear that out? Maybe there's sure. a romanticism that we're infatuated with or the public eye is infatuated with sure. and it's working. But how long until maybe that's not not the same draw from someone who may not be addicted to the, to the sport. Well, and how much did the pandemic push, like how much of it is pandemic people sure. that jumped into yeah. the sport, right? Like that, I always that wondered that. It, like it was like a full, you know, everything in the outdoors blew up and then, you know, fishing, fly fishing in general, Austin was gaining steam and then pandemic hits and then it just goes over the top yeah. with, with interest. So where will it settle? I'm mm -hmm. with you on that. It'll be cool to see where that goes. Will it run its course is sort of the question, but I'd, I'd, I'd kind of counter with this. Will any other fishing ever like overtake fly fishing for that like cool, romanticized kind of style of fishing? You know, that's what for 
better or worse, that's what fly fishing is seen as, you know, <laughs> the quiet sport. Uh, right, don't sure. they call it that? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, How long until they re- remake uh, River Runs Through It? Right. Right. I was going to say something like that is sort of what makes that. Like, you don't. I don't know if there is any movie that's similar about like bass well, there, fishing or something like yeah. that. You know, Ooh, there's <laughs> a new one that's out, right? Well, not no. a River Runs Through It, not, is it? it there's the River cool. Y. No, it's a new one, dude. You got to. You mean mending the line? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. It. It's a, a veteran yeah. movie. The veteran one, but anyway. Oh. It's not the same. It's not even We're based gonna. on the same story, though. No, right, 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 right. But again, there you are. Another fly fishing movie hitting the theater. It's like sure. <laughs> good, yeah. good point. Right. How often? Is, well, not ever, except once, one other time. Right. <laughs> and is there a bass fishing movie hitting the theater? <laughs> we should do it. <laughs> Conventional <laughs> tackle. <laughs> we could make it. I don't know. <laughs> and, and again, mm. like you know, you know me. I don't really like that at that aspect of fly fishing because. It's the elitist thing almost, right? We're doing something a little different. Well, different's fine, but we're doing something better than everyone. No, we're not doing anything. But It's just fishing. We're not doing anything better than anybody else. It's just fishing. And, well, we've been through that. There's no elitist uh, tone to trout bitten, or at least uh, we sure don't want to have that perception. Right. I mean, it's all just fishing. But I don't know if it'll run its course, Austin, as far as popularity. I do agree with you. Right. That's something... I don't know if it's changed. Yeah, it has. And right, a lot of people used to, it was a big thing. People would say, oh, the movie. You didn't have to say the name. The movie. The movie changed mm-hmm. this. Right. And the fly shops would tell you that. Like you experienced that out there, Matt. Everybody wants to fish the Blackfoot, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah. Before we move on from that piece of like old school maps and, you know, mm. just how we gathered information. One of the, Dom, I'd be interested in, to hear what you have to say about this piece, but what did before USGS stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like, can you remember? I don't remember at the beginning looking at that back in the early 2000s, late 90s. Right. Like, was that, if it was accessible, I feel like it wasn't as mainstream as it oh. is now. So that was a big piece. You're talking about like the you CFS, can, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. for me, Western what PA, flows, if I right? wanted to drive up to Central PA, like, yeah. Whew, you know, and, yeah. and you know how different the weather is. Like, right, right. man, I remember showing up and like, what? Right. Why is it muddy? <laughs> yeah. We used to call, the, the only thing we had was call the fly shop. And the fly shop right. would tell you. And, and yeah. you, you had to trust had to that fly them. shop right, that sure. if they were uh, going to give you a valid report. Or right on. You weren't. Convince you to come up and buy some stuff. And you weren't going to look at their website report because there was no website. It was You had to call them. You actually had to use right. the telephone. And um, that's, again, like the internet just changed everything in all sure. these ways that we're talking about. Obviously, the GPS, too, is part of that. I mean, forums, that's how Trout Pitten got its start, right? Sloop mm-hmm. set up our forum and put the, the title Trout Pitten at the top. It was a private forum. We've been through that. That's how Trout Pitten started. There were, what, five of us and then a few more. And then, yeah, we added more. And then we had it separated into legacy. And <laughs> anyway, it's just... That's how it started. And then like there were a lot of fishing blogs when I started Trout Pitten. Now, don't dare say the word blog, like Trout Pitten, whatever. It's not a blog anymore, <laughs> right. you know, and it right. isn't. And like blogs have definitely run their course, not just in fishing, but across the spectrum. And it's not. This isn't like a daily thing. It's not um, consecutive. It's, you know, there's, there's no linear timeline to this Trout Pitten, you know, to the website. It's very much... Well, just I, I like to think it's good information, good stories, commentary, whatever, that is somewhat timeless, right? So it's not a blog. It's not a blog format. But that was a thing back then. You sure. could probably sit here and name a dozen blogs that we all used to kind of read and, and follow. And, of course, that branched out into Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Instagram's big right now, man. I mean, I feel like the Huge. whole fly fishing yeah. community, or a, a good, good portion of it is right there. I, I'll get... Well, I mean it. Like the 70 year old anglers that I have are on Instagram, fly fishing. Like they get it. Yep. At least a portion of it, you know, they, they get it. They're probably listening to this podcast. A lot of them I know are listening to this podcast. I don't feel like there's an age divide much anymore with social media. Like it used to, honestly, like my dad does not have any social media and he's mid 70s, but he just never got into it and he never will. And that's fine. But he hardly, listen, hardly listens to the podcast even. Um, certainly doesn't watch many YouTube videos. <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, I, um, that he's going to. He's not 
sending comments to me on Instagram. <laughs> so there's, there's certainly, at some age, people aren't into it. I just feel like, man, it, it's a wide spectrum of uh, anglers, where they're from, what their age, you know, what their interests are, what their age group. It, they're there now. Everybody's there now. Sure. Yeah, I don't think there's anything as big as 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 impacting as the internet on the industry. Um, mm-hmm. You know, with all those things, when you guys were talking, all I could think of is me sweating my nards off in neoprene waders <laughs> back <laughs> back in the day. So, what about gear? Gears come a little bit, huh? A you little, still have those. Uh, you still have those neoprenes? Just just when I want to be an asshole and just whoa, walk around in skin tight Hodgmans. <laughs> Look at these. Look how they fit my crotch just, area. I yeah. kind of like to just get, I wear a funky hat and high hole people in my skin tight Hodgmans. <laughs> Stay warm. Those with his, uh, he has those hanging with his winter pack. Yeah. So look out, <laughs> yeah. out right. Bozeman. You see somebody high holing you in Hodgmans. Look out. It's a trout betting crew. <laughs> Trying to hold your hand. <laughs> In the, in the sweetheart hole. Sweetheart. He's just trying to stay warm in his seven millimeter neoprene. It's getting cold out here. <laughs> uh, need that extra layer. He's got no clothes on, just neoprenes. Right, right. right. nothing underneath <laughs> it. Free balling in the, in the hot. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a more recent change because I also started with, with neoprene Hodgman's. Did you? So I'm dead serious. <laughs> Come they on, you're like yeah. 20 years old, 22 maybe. 24 <laughs> yeah, the oldest. Yeah, I know, but like, uh, so I started <laughs> when I was 10 and, uh, and that's that was that my was first. Ten. That was the pair that I fished for like I don't know, first eight years. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow, Josh, I, don't, I mean, had like, those. I think you had a pair of those in college at one point. I probably had my old pair with yeah. the boot foots on them that would oh, like, yeah. wear your ankles to death. Oh, Young yeah. love and darling oh, yeah. would walk into the skeller in their Hodgmans. <laughs> 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 Give me those pony bottles, <laughs> yeah. rolling rock, yeah. case race. I've got a picture of Austin wearing like one of my enormous pair of Timberland boots because he had forgotten his oh my gosh. his wading boots one day. I've seen people Ooh. do that. Just Forgot put hiking boots on. Yeah. But I can immediately envision the photo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a good photo. Hodgman's in their hair. felt in their felt wading boots. <laughs> nice. <Exactly. laughs> so all I'm saying is it wasn't it wasn't it was somewhat recent because I remember like when my dad got the first pair of like Orvis Silver Sonics or something like that. Nice. And yeah. uh and that was, one of the, that was one of the first breathable pair, I th- or like like higher end breathable pair, I sure. think. Well, so I dare say I have I might have had the first generation of Sims. Um, I'm not positive of that, but but oof. I mean, there's nothing. There's there's nothing. There's no gaiters. There's no pocket. There's no zipper. Gosh, there's certainly no zipper. There's no zipper anywhere. There's no pocket. Um, it's just you know a tube. <laughs> it's like a tube you step into that has two legs <laughs> and I think they're probably, probably three layer too. cortex yeah um, still have them they're actually downstairs they have so many holes and tears and patches in them but I've just kind of kept them for um, yeah, for old well, times like, be worse late though. 90s man late 90s and I don't know I'm not saying I had them as soon as Sims came out Wh- when did Sims start does anybody know that 94, 90. Is that right? So, so, well, I think so it was bought on one of our hats. It was bought. It was bought by KC Walsh in huh. 94, 96, I think. You got to look that up. I could be wrong, but uh, and then they transformed it from that from that point. So you probably have an yeah. early on version, mm-hmm. which is super cool. Mine would have been like this. No, well, right, Antiques. Put them on, yeah, put raffle them off on eBay. That's Those right. Those are vintage. Vintage Sims. <laughs> um, they smell pretty good. The <laughs> I bet it was 95, 96 when I got this. Probably. And, I, bet, anyway. I bet at this point, Dom, you could just sign those bad boys and put them in a frame. There you go. You Yeah. Um, so breathable waders, man. Absolutely. That's, that's completely different than things were. And I'd say like, obviously, th- th- those make you more comfortable, right? That's the point. They're not trying to keep you warm like the five millimeter neoprene or more. They're not going to keep you warm. They're not trying to. You go ahead, layer up underneath that. I was making this point in an article not too long ago, reviewing waders and talking about it. Like waders are not, well, breathable waders are not supposed to keep you warm. Fine. Now, some of them don't keep you cool real well. Like in the summer, if they you know, have a lot of layers and a lot of pockets and zippers and stuff that takes up the breathability or takes away the breathability. Point is, all I'm saying is like breathable wa- waders should keep you comfortable. And then we have, oh, just even the advancement of base layers. 
and you know, Dr. Wool isn't with us tonight because he's got some family obligations, but he got me going on how much wool has changed. And uh, Josh, you too. Um, yeah. Just saying like these, these guys were hunting in wool base layers. And I was like, really? Wool? And they convinced me. <laughs> We've been through this on season different one of the podcast. World. It is. Yeah. It's a different world. I mean, we all wore like those, those uh, cream colored waffle long john made of cotton, right? Like that was the <laughs> yeah, stuff yeah, back yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We used to call those t-shirt pants. Yeah. yeah. T-shirt pants. <laughs> That's what they look and feel like, like. I don't know why we ever thought that that was going to keep us warm. No, and, and everybody smelled funny, right? Oh, we, yeah. When you were in yeah. those, you just smelled bad. You stink. Well, I, I drove to the river with Bill yeah. the other day. Uh, never, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> there was a scent. Bill Dell smelled. That's right. <laughs> Tacos for breakfast. Ooh, hey now. Hate to see that. Hey now. Hate Probably to see that. Sheets. <laughs> Giving you the business on the way over. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about those neoprenes with your Hodgmans with the uh, boot foot waders. I mean, stocking foot waders. I think that's a big change, man. Yeah. I mean, stocking foot waders are obviously so much more. Com- there you are again, comfort. Yeah. And then putting studs in them and just traction along with basically the comfort of a hiking boot, right? All that has changed. Yep. And the more comfortable you are, the more apt you are to uh, heck i'll stay out here oh i feel good i'll stay out here i'm not miserable with blisters on my feet or i'm not cold as heck with my with my t-shirt pants on (laughs) (laughs) Sure, you know that's it man the gear you just the 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 gear we wear changed Mm -hmm. you know and the breathability of rain jackets i remember i used to be like wearing a garbage bag absolutely Mm, point and you're just a poncho it wasn't yeah, a garbage it was, bag, but it's yeah. a poncho. <laughs> it's a garbage bag with a couple holes in it. Right. Exactly. Here, kid, slide this over your head. <laughs> Come on, Dad. <laughs> just, right. He'd say, just wait under the bridge. You'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's bright blue. Oh, yeah. Right? We all did that. I didn't get a nice, breathable rain jacket until this year. I've been fishing really? like super old stuff for, I mean, forever. Or the cheapest nice stuff, like Patagonia's cheapest line of rain jackets, which no, just, still counts. It's still really nice. Yeah. Hey, that's maybe. what I wear. Better than a poncho. Oh. It's better than that's right, the garbage bag. Poncho. <laughs> yeah, obviously it makes a difference. Again, like whether it's the know, the high you know, the five hundred dollar jacket or the two hundred dollar jacket, still that, that breathability, like like Bill said, along yeah. with I don't know, nice cuffs, nice hood, actually does shed water. Vents built in. Vents, right, right, right. Shedding or releasing heat as it sheds water. That's it, but man. Vents have been huge, I think, just in rain jackets. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. In all kinds of layers. So what about the gear with the, uh, you know, the actual, the actual equipment? What about rods? Rods have changed, oh. right? To, you got lighter for, for sure. Yeah. Mm, lighter. And faster. Like if you pick up a rod that was labeled as fast like 10 years ago, and you try to cast it now, you're like, man, this thing's like a, I know, this thing's like a bamboo rod. Mm-hmm. That's somewhat driven by tactics too, and we can get into tactics also. But you know, with modern nymphing or, or uh, heavier streamers or bigger flies, those fast or really stiff rods become mm-hmm. more useful than maybe they used to be 20, 30 years ago. I think those faster rods allow you to do different things. One well, could be faster or just different action rods allow you to do different things. And we've talked before about how the specialization of the industry. Yeah. Yeah, Basically, if you want to just throw wet flies beyond 50 feet, you know, between 50 and 75 feet away, which is pretty dang far, obviously. We got a switch rod for you. Right. We got a rod. That's right. That's right. That's what I was thinking. Like, we got a rod for you. And whatever you're into, we got a rod for that. We got a rod for that. And they do. And they are quite well designed, I think, usually, um, for the purpose and versatility used to be the game used to be like hey you want to get into fly fishing kid okay here's a nine foot five weight and you're good you can do everything yeah but now it's really specialized tools there's still versatile rods that's great um but it is confusing i guess that's part of the downside here of all the things we're talking about really everything we've brought up it can all confuse the hell out of you more choices more options more problems (laughs) <laughs> yeah. A lot of positive change too. There, they solve a lot of issues. If if you're really into one style of fishing, mm. that rod can be a, a great thing for you. Yeah, and it can allow you to fish the well the way that really does work best for your waters, your goals, 
length, speed, um, yeah, the, even the design. What graphite, right? When I mm -hmm. when I was first buying a rod, there was still a lot of talk about fiberglass. Not that there isn't now, but well, come on, right? It's graphite. <laughs> you still got your fiberglass guys. Come on, hey, come on. I'm not laughing at the fiberglass guys. Come on, Austin, stop chuckling. <laughs> What's he doing? You're gonna make enemies. I said nothing. <laughs> There's, there's nothing wrong with glass. I don't get it's it. It's not dead. You ever cast them, Matt? No. Dude. Spend much time? <laughs> I, I cast them. Someone gave me a bamboo rod once. Yeah, that okay. too. And I mm -hmm. set the hook and snapped it. In like a <laughs> oh, second. man. It's probably like a thousand dollar <laughs> rod. And, whoops. <laughs> and ever since then, I was like, hell with that. I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't need that. Like, no, I don't I need it. I just, no. I don't want to cast your glass rod. I don't want to cast your bamboo rod. Right. I know. I need something that's going to hold up. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Not that they wouldn't hold up. Right. Just that Matt yeah. is, uh, you know, a bit of a sasquatch. I'm just very violent. Yeah. That too. I don't, I don't mess around. I don't need shit failing in the, you know, I'm not trying to catch a four inch fish. <laughs> <laughs> right to the point. So many enemies. I had a graph uh, <laughs> uh, fiberglass rod for yeah for about two years, and then I sold it because I thought it would be a great idea to take it brook trout fishing because it would be mm -hmm. more sensitive and it would right. you know those four inch fish would fight a little better yeah. But um, I quickly learned that 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 fiberglass rod doesn't turn over quickly, and so when you got to yeah. turn it over quick in the rhododendron, you just end up in a rhododendron all the time. So <laughs> I know. that one went up on eBay. <laughs> no, nice. I'm with you. It, what's the one that? What's the yellow one? Oh, I have the butter well, stick. The Reddington butter stick. Oh, the butter, butter stick. stick. Eagle what? claw one. Get out of here. The butter butter stick. Oh, the yellow. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I think I have the eagle claw. claw. Oh, I, I still have that one. I own the eagle claw one as well. I actually I like the, that rod. That's yeah. Fun. It's slow. Let's go off. I mean, compared to what? Six foot Let's six have a glass inches. rod competition. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Glass off. Again, again like, hey, you know, whatever. Like, If that's what they like. I mean, look, I'm not trying to shit on the glass rod guys and the bamboo. If you have a niche. <laughs> and and you want to try to catch fish with bamboo, you're better than me. Like, I mean, go for it. <laughs> I just, I can't wrap my head around it. Horse hair leader. Right? I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. It's like, Only why do you want to do that? Me. But whatever. Cat gut. <laughs> I'm on the cat gut. <laughs> He's on the cat gut. <laughs> <laughs> Kill my own cat. Oh, no. No, never mind. Back it up. <laughs> Back it up. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, <hey> now. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. Hey now. Again, like you well, could just roll the last know. 30 seconds as the <laughs> outro. No. You don't even need to edit it. <laughs> how, about this, how about this, though? It, it, I, I think it goes along with what I said in the beginning. Wherever you get into fly fishing, it, it shapes your frame of reference, right? So I got into fly fishing when graphite was the thing, and it was definitely the thing. It was well established. And I'm like, I'm not, I guess I'm not getting fiberglass. I'm not going to do this bamboo thing because they were much more costly. And I'm okay. I'm going to get myself a nice medium fast graphite rod. That's what I did. And now everything bamboo feels like, come on, man, load. Let's go load back there. You ready? Okay, here we go. Same thing with glass. I, I, I actually, I have what, two fiberglass rods then. And uh, my buddy Rich, when he passed away, he left me a bamboo rod as well. And I, you know, I fish them like once a year and then I go, whew, that's not for me. Mm -mm. Um, that's that's the thing. Although Rich, I'm sure, got into it, obviously at a different point in time. So he has a certain appreciation for those rods that I've I never had. Right. Not right or wrong, just different, right? And that's what we're talking about. The way things really have changed. And I am not going to do all the nymphing tactics that I like to do or the big streamer tactics that I like to do on that bamboo rod or on that eagle claw yellow one. Uh-uh. Oh. I mean, there are actually some limitations that, let's say, the earlier technology will, will limit you to. Agreed. Tippet strength, that's huge. Like the, That is. Tippet's changed a lot. Just in the last 10 years, it's come a long way. Just felt like everything was breaking. I'm still fishing 3X and thinking, <laughs> I, I need say. to, right? I was going to say, so Bill used to be fishing a 3X that was five pound. Now he's up to like 15 pound 3X. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I'm good. I'm not I'm changing good. my diameter for anybody. Just keeps getting better. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. Now I can land <laughs> sharks on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to mm, ask if funny. he charged his battery. Who's that? Darling. Darling, oh, change no. your charge battery. Oh, I got no. I got it. 
<laughs> no, nothing goes away. He's still he's, there. He's in. He's in. We've never Classic. seen that. We've never seen that sign. Classic adult. I've never seen it. All we see of his face is gone. What we see, uh oh, you know, he's uh, blanked out. All we saw was a red battery image that said change or charge battery. It's like you've been through this before, and it seems like an adult would have like been prepared for that. That's what, <laughs> that's what Trevor said. Listen, listen, listen. If listen. we were to if we were to record video, then mm -hmm. it would matter. And <laughs> then it would matter. <laughs> yeah. and, it would matter. Yeah, and right. you would all look like goofs. <laughs> <laughs> so someday, because things are changing, Josh, and many people expect or, or want or even now expect you to have a video along with your podcast. They want, they want the video. It would probably so do great. We're going to have to change. It would do well. Anyway, we'll have to change at some point because everything changes. I still think it'd be really sweet to do as one of our one of our videos do a live podcast mm -hmm. in one room. Oh yeah, make a sweet in one room too would really change things. Yeah, no, we still need to have call-ins too, Dom. I know. So Austin and I have been talking about <laughs> doing the YouTube live it, thing. Yeah, and you can dumb. definitely do it during that. That'd be that'd if be we neat. do it. I'm going to sit in my Hodgman's. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just I'll sit here and hold my uh, fat, my uh, yellow with my glass with my glass rod. Yeah, right. Hold your what, Bill? <clears throat> yeah, what are you holding, Bill? <laughs> Eagle claw. What are you Bill holding? What's he going to hold? Hey, now. Uh, okay. All right, back on. Hold back on. Stick. Back on. <laughs> get back on track. <laughs> Come on, man. I want to I switch gears to tactics. Yep. You get into specifically, it. Uh, specifically nymphing. And I'm going to go back to the last 10 years again, where like when I was in college, mm. when I started with the mono rig stuff. So like five years ago. And, no, I wish it youngest was. Guy, are you the youngest or is, or is Josh the youngest? No, I'm the youngest. Okay, I thought so. Young love. Well, let, let's say uh, let's say eight eight years ago. Right Ooh. on. And I know. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Jealous. <laughs> Seeing people nymph with a fly line was common, right? That's like what everybody did. Oh, yeah. Every tactic was based off a of fly line. And if sure. you saw somebody fishing with a long leader, it was like, huh. That's rare, but What's he you know, doing? I'm learning yeah. the same thing. Mm -hmm. And now it's almost uncommon if you go out and you see somebody nymphing with a fly line. Especially around here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's a yeah, great point. Very specific to our central PA area. But it's, uh, it's most common now, I would say, mm -hmm. to see people nymphing with a, a long leader or a, a monorig or Euro style leader. And uh, I'm not sure I would have expected that. I agree. If you would ask the magic eight ball when you were in college. Mm -hmm. The magic uh, eight ball. What will people be nymphing with? <laughs> yeah, what you would know. they look like on the water? They would Because it's such a foreign thing. If somebody sees you doing that and they want to know, like, mm -hmm. what, what material is that? What's chameleon? Oh, Never right. heard of it. Right. It's come a long way because the internet. Again, I, I just think it's, the accept, it's not just the acceptance of information. that It is accepted because there's so much information out there. And then, you know, it's one of those things that as soon as you try it, you go, this tight line thing makes a lot of sense for flies that are under the water. And we, you can do all these rigs. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it, like how now a micro mono rig gone like six pound or five pound or whatever, like five X, you know, your whole leader. Some people are nymphing with a leader that's all five X. Cool, go do it. Anyway, that's like going to the end of the line. That's as far as you can go um, away from, let's say, traditional fly fishing, right? And it's, I think it's very much accepted, at least in kind of our circles, right? There's people that yeah. frown upon this. That's fine. More anyway, accepted it's like, than it ever has been. Ever, right, right. Anyway, it's like the main thing to do in the competition circles. And so very much accepted, well, in that way, right? It, it's, I think the internet has provided that space for everybody to kind of do their own thing and be somewhat accepted, except for Matt. Look at him. As fly anglers and tires, we understand the value of having the right tool for the job. AvidMax.com offers over 20,000 products and the knowledge to help you find the right tool for your job, whether that be at the tying bench or on the water. Listeners of the Trout Pitten Podcast receive a special one-time discount code at AvidMax.com. Enter the code TB10 at checkout on full-priced items to save 10% off your order. Orders over $25 ship for free, so you can put more gas in your tank or beer in your cooler. For all things fly fishing and tying, Elevate your game with Avid Max. Precision Fly and Tackle is a family-owned business with a passion for the outdoors and a sense of adventure. 
They are anglers who enjoy every moment spent on the water with family and friends. Precision Fly and Tackle carries the widest selection of Euro rods, reels, lines, leaders, flies, and accessories. From the beginner to the advanced angler, Precision Fly and Tackle can outfit every angler, no matter the budget. Visit them online at precisionflyandtackle.com. Then use code TROUTBITTEN10, that's the number 10, for 10% off your order. Gear up with Precision Fly and Tackle for your next adventure. So do you think the the George Daniel book, Dynamic Nymphing, the first one, was kind of the, the catalyst mm-hmm. to kind of create yeah. the acceptance for it? Definitely. That definitely made it mainstream. Stackpole published it, right? And right around that time, I mean, again, you had forums blowing up about that kind of information. Yeah, and it's it's a great book, too. It I is. remember uh, after fishing, one of our local streams, and I caught like one or two fish, and I texted Dom, and I told him how I did, and he's like, oh, man. Have you read Dynamic Nymphing yet? Mm-hmm. Like, no, not really. So if you would have read through that, uh, understood it all, uh, digested it, probably would have caught double digits, no hmm. doubt, on a day like today. Yeah. And, you know, that turned out to be pretty true. What I like about what George did with that book, with all the tactics, so George was a comp guy for a while, but he was and still is very open-minded to just so many different tactics. The title dynamic nymphing i think is just well suited for what it is what that book is and he's like all right here's a bunch of different ways you can nymph uh very much centered around the tight line style you know but he talks about split shot he talks about indicators he talks about even throwing some you know streamers on it a little bit then of course there's a whole book on streamers but yeah i i do think bill that that was a, a pivot point right Right there, that, that was a bit, kind of like Gallup's book, uh, Modern Streamers for Trophy Trout. Like, think about that. That changed the streamer game. What everybody used to think was a big streamer all of a sudden was like three inches. That's not big. We're going five, six inches. And that book really changed things too. I will also comment too is those things caught on. I think they caught on regional. Mm-hmm. And I've actually seen them, you know, the George's book, Catch On, in central PA and expand from there. Yeah. yeah. And then Gallup's the same, like I would say there's a very yeah. heavy influence of Gallup fishermen out here. Right. And, sure, and he's yeah. based on the Madison. And so it's like, Oh yeah, this, that's kind of the thing to do out here where the tight line nymphing is a little less yeah. common out here. Um, and it's kind of neat to see how those regional, you know, the, the regional effect, I guess, from, from some main, stays in the industry <laughs> that when i was in montana in 2017 i went into a fly shop in missoula and i asked them if they sold tippet rings and the <laughs> guy said oh yeah absolutely and he brought me over to uh, a counter and he mm. tried to sell me uh loon rigging foams <laughs> 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 and i had hey, to politely, <laughs> politely say oh you know i understand why you you thought I meant this, but right, I was actually sure. looking for something different. <laughs> oh yeah, it might no, not be good. that way it's now. A great point. No, it's still it's, it's you know it's still, you can you see you see it happen. You see people you know tight line and thing, and uh, it's definitely not as yeah. common though as back home. The, your waters aren't as perfectly suited for it as mm-hmm. ours are either. Nope, though. And just Correct. like the gallop sinking line, big streamer style, and I'm generalizing there, but that's not as perfectly suited to our waters as it is right. to yours you know yep. lo- bigger rivers longer retrieves and stuff suit you let's say better than that better than the water i was on today yeah sure yeah. sure all that stuff spreads faster though out of your region and out of yep. this region again because the internet and again yep. Be- yep, because people too i think have spread out hmm, you know that i mean people don't always just stay in their hometown anymore there's you matt sure. you're, you're far away from yep. your hometown and so we're so are you, Austin, a little bit, you know, and, and Josh, obviously that's a factor too. People spread out, man. And then they, they're going to take those ideas along with them. There's more acceptance of those tactics, the, the spreading of those tactics around. And I think the hybridization of those kind of different tactics, Hey, let me try adding this streamer thing to the tight line game. That's pretty sure. cool. You know, and that's a whole style of fishing itself. Now, I think if you can learn one of the tactics on any river system, bigger river system, you can probably take it anywhere in the country and apply mm-hmm. it. I'm with you there too. Mm-hmm. And apply it might mean there's going to need to be some adaptation. Maybe yeah. it needs a longer tippet, whatever. It, it might need a longer 
butt section or a, a faster sinking line or whatever the case is. Yeah. Yeah, you can apply it almost anywhere. If you learn it, if you know that tactic kind of inside and out, you'll go, ooh, this will work here, but I have to do these two things to make it work. And then you can really do some neat things. I, I, think, I think that's what's fun, you know, is, is thinking how can I do something a little different or take what I know really well now to this new river that's kind of confusing me, but like here are my, here are my good set of skills, my best set of skills, the things I do best. And, you know, how can I adapt them to maybe to this new water that I just, maybe you just moved, you know, you just moved halfway across the country and like, I'm, I'm going to try to still fish the way I do. Matt, that's kind of what you do, man. Right? Sure. Again, like you say, the tight line thing isn't necessarily real popular exactly where you are, but you, you do it well. You've adapted. Do, yeah. And it's just breaking it down in your environment. <clears throat> right? Mm. I mean, how many times do you hear good advice is like, you got to break your stream down into smaller streams. Mm -hmm. And I think you can take those tactics, you know, into bigger rivers when they just, they look big and intimidating, but really it's just a bunch of small rivers, mm -hmm. <laughs> small streams into one big river. And you can not on all of them, but on a lot of them. Yeah. Um, so you absolutely can apply those tactics, you know, at, all over the place um, and have success. Well, you were trained well on what we call the big boy river back there in Western PA, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it wasn't all Honestly, that different. Honestly, though. Nope. Yeah. So that's the good, good representation of a lot of the rivers out here. I hear you. Is a, is a big one like that. Hey, anything else? Anything else, guys? What are we missing? Bill, you got something? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think some of the, some of the companies are actually starting to build and design equipment for women now, where in the past hey, no. there was none. Bill's single. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to see women out there on the river yeah that's right uh, <laughs> not gonna go over <laughs> <laughs> that's not gonna go over well bill it's just not gonna <laughs> not going it's not gonna make the cut <laughs> back on track anything else guys <laughs> anything else <laughs> bill why do you like that so much bill why do you like that uh what's what's good about that I'd like to see a women's version of the zipper waiter. <laughs> <laughs> I know women must be like, zipper waiter? That doesn't help me. <laughs> Dude, I never thought about that. Zipper waiter doesn't help women at all. No. They don't, don't care. They, they make them like for women. Sexist. All those sexist zippered waiters. Thanks for nothing. They don't even help us. What else? What do we have? I was going to say, uh, no, you weren't. I, think, I think social media <laughs> in general, right? Some, some localized- no, just localized issues, right? And and how it's changed and how it's able to reach not just a regional audience, but a national audience. And so when you uh, have yeah. these issues up in Bristol Bay or mm. the Madison or access, oh, you know, nice. issues or whatever, it's it's much more powerful now in a positive way because you can gain that much more nice. support. Than, yeah. than back in the day um, where, you know, that, that might have been a lot more, more grassroots stuff, different methods of gaining support. Um, and now it's, you know, so easy. Anytime someone tries to mess with mm -hmm. the smallest thing or there's a, uh, you know, chemical spill yeah. or whatever, right? The whole yeah, angling yeah. community knows. And, and I yep. think that's a really, really powerful thing. And it's a positive thing that's changed. Definitely. Because everybody, if something happens on the Madison, for example, then is that spot burning? Like they turn, like they turn off a dam. No, I mean that's not. No. Anyway, if something happens yeah. there, then everybody, you know, yeah, every couple email lists and a couple Instagram posts, yeah. and everybody knows about it. Everybody, everybody knows can about it. Gang up can on go on and sign it. petitions right yeah, online, yeah. coast to coast. I mean, that's, more that's powerful. Well, but then again, I mean, the the downside of that is that there's more angler pressure than ever. We all know that. Sure. Positive, negative. You're going to have more friends of the river, and then those friends of the river are going to fish it more. Good and bad. It's good and bad. More pressure than ever, but I think also uh, more catch and release tactics are, are more widely spread kind of in, in tandem with the rising pressure as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, that's at least a positive thing. Not in Yenzerville still. We're still on the catch and kill routine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Western PA still has a catch and kill ethic. Yeah. That's, I mean, really, no. What we're saying there is that a lot of places still are put and take. That's fine. They put them in, they stock them, and people take them out. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, Austin, you're right, dude. Like, catch and release is kind of synonymous with fly fishing now. Agreed? Yeah, I agree. 
I mean, that's wasn't yeah. there a meme about who was it? It was uh, no Joe Rogan said that not too long. He said, "So what you guys are doing?" He goes, "You're like a fly fisherman. You're just catching fish, messing with them, and putting them back." <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, that's how far it's come, right? That's that's the that's what we do, and it's it's widely accepted. It obviously has gone way beyond fly fishing. And even like, well, you know, I'm fishing for striper here a little bit. And this, there's a lot more catch and release in the striper community. Everybody just used to kill everything you possibly could, which was within your slot limit. And now it's, yeah, it's spreading. That's a good thing, obviously, especially when you have more <clears> angle <throat> pressure. I think catch and release is, well, as I think back to how it was when I was a kid, I kept almost everything that I caught. It was a put and take. Again, like, like Bill said, in Yenzerville. Is that why you're missing PA, a tooth? That's what we did. That's why. Yeah, I got a tooth knocked out. You ate too out. many, fi- you ate too many some split fish. shot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, we'd, catch, we'd keep almost all of them. And now, man, I haven't kept a wild fish for a very long time. It's just, you, you let them go. That's expected now. It's not like, hey, guys, look, I'm putting this one back. It's like, yeah, we know. <laughs> that's what we do. Hey, I'm <laughs> with him. Just look at him. Look at me. I'm <laughs> with him. <laughs> <laughs> now I put him back. <laughs> Get the release. Josh, what do you have? Anything else? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> He's it just all. here. If you, if you drag this on, you can hide in the room and not, not yeah. have to worry about the kids. <clears throat> He's just here to drink a beer and relax. Fun to listen to you guys. And grow a beard. That's right. Someday. How many deer have you shot so far this this season? Just one on opening day. Nice. Yeah. He's saving me the bucktails. He's saving, you know, sometimes. It's a, it's a doe oh. tail, but yep. Doe <laughs> tail lures. to call it something else. <laughs> Josh, I helped, my, I helped my buddy carry out uh, or pack out elk meat. That's a lot of work, and, isn't it? Dude. I like, can't imagine. A big wow moment. Oh, yeah. I had 100 pounds on my back. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. It's it's insane. And how like, deep was he? I mad respect. It was we had it easy. We only had to hike it like a half a mile. Um, but my goodness, is that a is that a whole thing? I got I got new respect for the, the elk yeah. hunters out out there. Yeah, that's a different game. In pounds, how much meat are you? Two hundred pounds. Yeah. Two hundred on an, on an elk, fifty yeah. pounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was that in Look, grizzly country? Yeah. Were you were you hiking fast? Mm. Yeah. I mean, you get seriously a, put it this way. We walked up to the carcass on a, with uh, pistols out. Mm-hmm. You don't mess around with that. No, no. It's, that's cool though. I, I, I don't know. That's it's, a dream for sure. I'd love to get out there and do that. Just love those wild environments. All right. There it is. So everything changes. That's the only constant. And in the fly fishing world, the tactics, the gear, and how we share all of this information changes. Even though what the trout eat And how they eat it pretty much stays the same. That time frame, that snapshot from where you entered the fly fishing world shapes so much of what you do on the water. And it's amazing what just 20 calendar years does to that snapshot. So maybe, just maybe, try to liberate yourself from it. If you've been fishing for 50 years, then open your world to what might be gained with new fly tying materials or the tactics that rely on specialized rods. And if you've just gotten into the fly fishing game in the last few years, take a look back. Realize that nymphs didn't always have a tungsten bead at the head. And know that fly fishing always begins and ends with great casting form. Okay, we'll see you next week, everyone. My friend, Matt Grobe. Will you read us out? Absolutely. Remember... The Trout Bitten Project is a free resource for all anglers. The Trout Bitten website hosts over a thousand articles, hey now. endless stories, commentaries, tactics, tips, and more. Find what you like through the top menu and through the search page. Navigate by way of the categories and tags too. Be sure to find the Trout Bitten YouTube channel, now featuring the Trout Bitten Tip Series, the Fish and Film Series, and the Trout Bitten Fly Box, all in collaboration with Wilds Media. And now, thank you for listening to the Trout Bitten Podcast. Please give the show a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and leave a comment because that really helps. Thanks. Until next time, friends, fish hard, enjoy the day, and find your life on the water.
let them suffer. That's right, baby. I'll take the Yinzer title belt. Walk around in skin tight Hodgman's. It's all downhill from there. Look out, Bozeman. Ooh, hate to see that. More choices, more options, more problems. You're better than me. Like, I mean, go for it. Come on, Austin. Stop chuckling. Then I was like, hell with that. I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't need that. Like, I don't need it. That's not big. We're going five, six inches. Throw it in there. Nobody's going to know that we were sincere about that. 